come on out to Brown Mountain Bottle Works at 115 East Union Street in Morganton, North Carolina, the place to be for great craft beer. Browse their shelves with hundreds of craft beer selections. Relax and enjoy one of their 12 draft taps. Check them out on the Untapped app for their current draft beer selections and go to their website to see the latest beer offerings and events at www.brownmountainbottleworks.com. We'll see you there. Dave's behind the camera with NC Beer Guys. Welcome to another episode of the NC Beer Buzz. We are continuing our tour around Western North Carolina, visiting a lot of the brand new breweries out here, and a couple of old favorites that have done new and wonderful things. But we're here today at a brand new brewery in Fairview, North Carolina, the Whistle Hot Brewing Company, and we're here with Gina Maselli, and she and her uh, significant other half, Tom, mm -hmm. uh, run and own the brewery here. She kind of is the manager in the day, does the day kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He comes in at night and does the brewery kind of stuff. He's uh -huh. like the brewer. Yep. And you're, you're the brains and he's the brewer. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Good, good. So thanks for having us in. And you're as welcome. I said, we're in Fairview right on the highway here. And we're in a caboose. That's a real caboose. It's a real caboose. That's been in Tom's family, I understand, for many years. Yep, since he was eight years old. And what's the story about, do we know the story behind a caboose? Like, uh -huh. it came from where? So the caboose was built in 1969 by Norfolk and Western. And in 1995, all the cabooses were getting scrapped out and taken to scrapyards because the railroad didn't need them anymore. So Tom's family wanted to save a couple of them. Because they were into locomotives and train lure uh -huh. and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, Tom's family's been into trains since long before he was born. So they were, you know, they wanted to save a couple cabooses from getting scrapped out. So they got a couple of them. And this one was one they never did anything with. So when Tom wanted to start the brewery, he said, let's use this one to uh, make the tap room. And let's do something unique. Exactly. Do something, something different. different. Yep. The adaptive reuse. Give it new life. We have a cargo car. Just kind of, we're on a nice deck that attaches mm -hmm. between a cargo car where you could have some covered eating if it, or, or dining or drinking if you were in the rain or in the weather mm -hmm. because there really is not much space in the, what serves as the, in the, caboose, yep. the caboose, the tap room. Yep, caboose, and this is the yep. brewery behind us in the restrooms? Oh, no, the brewery's down the hill. We the brewery's down the hill, yep, okay. restrooms are right up here. I got you. Okay, yeah. good. So... Other than, so that kind of explains where the name came from then, because that was mm -hmm. one of the things too. Yeah, Whistle Hop. Whistle Hop. Yep. So All it's like Whistle Stop because we're a little small town, a little small spot, mm -hmm. but got our caboose, so I had to have the train reference. And he had been a brewer, home brewer, kind of thought he wanted to do brewing. Uh huh. And you kind of came along, or you brewed oh, no. with him? Um, yeah, we met when we were 23, and he was already home brewing by that point. So, so. you knew that was part of the deal? Uh-huh, I knew it was part of the That's deal. That's part of the deal when yep. you came in, right, yeah. good, good. Yep, so he was into it, and then he got more and more into it, you know, as we were together for a while. So. Right. Yep, got married, and then one day he got a uh, walk-in fridge for, a for AB Tech for free, and I was like... You want a walk-in fridge for homebrewing? Yeah, we might be thinking a little he more than like, homebrewing. Let me, let, me, let me talk to you about that. So that was right. kind of how the, the brewery got started. And the determination of the idea uh -huh. that we might do something might bigger do something than just, bigger than just five the... gallons in the garage exactly. every now and then. Yep. That's great. Yeah. So when we come to his Whistle Hop, is it going to be a style of brew? Do we brew all across the continuum with lots of kind of different beers? We do a lot of different styles. We, we try to keep things really flavorful. Tom likes to say that he has a culinary approach to beer. So okay. he, likes to, he likes to think of, like, what would I like to eat? What would I like to go with food? And then he, tried, then he makes Beer so he does a lot of it. beers that might be food and beer pairing type mm -hmm. beers. Exactly. Yep. We have one coming on right now that's in the fermenter. It's a coconut curry Indian black ale. Oh, goes coconut with, curry Indian black ale. Uh huh. Goes really well with Indian food. Then we also have on right now a Bodhi Wit beer, which we made for our friends in honor of their baby Bodhi that was just born. So nice. it's a Thai Wit beer. So it's got lemongrass and ginger and mango. It was really good with Thai food. So, so these guys are all about Dave's kind of beers. You know, Dave's such a flavor head. And Dave brews the same way Tom does, apparently. All these flavors. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Dave, Dave, we, Dave brews when he home brews. We, we like our flavors. Mm -hmm. So situating where you are, you're six or eight months or a year in, mm -hmm. not yet. Uh, but people come from Asheville. We're not that far from Asheville. Mm -hmm. People are starting to know West North Carolina is a craft beer mecca. Absolutely. Do most of the people who come in here know craft beer already? Or is there still some education that you're... We, we get a really good mix because locally, a lot of people here around, you know, we have such good access to so many good breweries that it's hard to live here and not know and your not craft beer. And not know something about craft beer already mm -hmm. yeah. if you're a beer drinker. Totally, yeah, right. if you're a beer drinker. But we also get a lot of people that have never, you know, they might be into trains more than beer and they might just come and see the caboose. And just stop and see the caboose. And That's just stop to see it and then they're like, oh, well, you're a brewery too. So then that kind of gets them trying stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we get a good, nice mix of people. And how seasonal is it or going to be? Um, you well, what's your hope? 
Well, we definitely are a lot busier in the summer. Um, we're open year-round. Right now, we're only open four days a week because we're on a one-barrel system, so we can only make enough beer to be open four days a week. Right. But just this past week, we ordered a ten-barrel system, so that'll be changing once so we get all that So in. there is production capacity expansion there is, in yep. the plan soon. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good, good. Because at one barrel, one barrel's he's real, working like every night or I mean, all the time. Yep, trying yeah, to just keep it up here. Yep. Now, can we get what's a lot beer at local accounts, or are you trying to keep it here for now? Here because for now, of the size. just because we're so small. Yeah, we, we can't be you giving You had no excess beer, beer. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yep. But on 10 barrel? Well, we'll see. Then the 10 barrel, we'll, we're going to try to just keep um, doing our tap room, but we might give out to a couple different breweries that we have, you know, friendships with, or we might give to or a couple in different... in town, yeah, different, local accounts. Yeah, local accounts, Because you yeah. can manage close in. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Right. Good, good. Yep. So, has it been everything that you guys thought it would be? What's it like? Two years ago, let's say, you, you were knowing it's coming, uh -huh. thinking it's going to happen, everybody has their struggles getting open, mm -hmm. you, like everybody else, had issues, site issues, permit mm -hmm. issues. Uh, train license. issues. <laughs> well, I don't really know about it. We haven't heard a lot about Those train happen, issues because yep. you did such a unique thing. Uh -huh. Was it an issue putting what you put here? Oh, absolutely. Why? We, we had to cut. We had to cut a door in the caboose just to make, just to get people in and out. We had to do all sorts of things to it to make it able to be a bar. So. And to pass certain codes mm -hmm. then as what it is. Oh, yeah. It needed a whole ton of work. That was about a year just working on the caboose, getting it to be commercial and able to be rated for people coming in drinking beer. So, oh, yeah. I didn't thought I didn't thought that uh -huh. issue is that. Yeah. So is that a challenge then? So other than the train issue, uh -huh. what is the challenge? Um, we did most everything we could ourselves. We did the train restoration. We built a lot of the deck ourselves, all the landscaping, all that. So you didn't come in with big buck investors behind oh, you? Oh, yeah. No, it's we're just you a small he. family business. Yep. Right. Yeah, mom and dad, his mom and dad are involved, too. So, because yeah. they're local people, you said, but down the hill. Mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, dad does a lot of work. Dad's up here just about every day of the week working on different stuff. So. Well, that's great, yeah. though. But what an environment for you guys to mm -hmm. have a life? And for kids when they come, or if they come, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's just a wonderful, we're all in this family together. Absolutely. And we're doing something that's fun, it's not as stressful as a lot of jobs could be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That was a dream. We wanted somewhere for our community to come hang out and just be together and, you know, get to, because our Fairview didn't really have, like, a gathering spot. We had a lot of great restaurants mm -hmm. and a lot of, you know, interesting different farms things. There wasn't really, like, a local, like, a hangout. big hangout, right. yeah, big right. yard for kids to play in, all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we wanted to give kind of a family-friendly sort of atmosphere for the neighborhood to come together. Oh, that's great. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. And it must be so much, re so rewarding for you to give back to the community. Absolutely, yeah. That's good. Because you guys, wonderful. I mean, his family has been in the community forever. Mm -hmm. And now, and it's given back in many ways, I'm sure. But now it's so evident what you're contributing back to the community. Absolutely. But yeah, adding and bringing everybody up, the economic drivers, mm -hmm. that this kind of place, you know, you bring in a food truck, mm -hmm. you bring in a bands, you bring in all kinds of things that are happening here mm -hmm. that wouldn't have happened before. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, we can work with different local musicians that come play, and we use a lot of different local ingredients in our beer, so yeah, it's, got, it's definitely got its ripple effect. Right. That, yep. uh, that's the whole beauty of craft beer, I think, in North Carolina. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for having us in. We you're wish welcome. you all luck in the world. Thank you so yeah. much for coming. So the next time you're on the road, Going to the Fairview, you can't miss the Big Red Caboose. That's Whistle Hot Brewing. Give him a stop. Say hey to Gina. Toffee's here. If he's working, just tell him to stop a minute. Hey, chill. Please do. <laughs> chill, yeah, chill a minute. Have a beer. Absolutely. Till next time, this is David Beer reminding you to drink local. Keep your beer dollars in North Carolina.